It's time for our heroes to stop dicking around and solve this mystery. This month on D&D Minus. As the last tiny mimic penis vanishes into the fire, the runes behind you once again glow blue and Murloc Gnomes bursts in the door again. He stares for a moment around the room at the sliced, burned, and squished phalluses covering nearly every surface and says, I suppose you're going to tell me that this wasn't you doing sex stuff either. No, no. Hey, what's up? By the way, do you just like wait for us outside of rooms until we're done with whatever and then come in? Yes. Yeah, it's funny. Every time we go into a freaking room that you bring us to, someone attacks us. Yeah, that too. Well, I mean, I noticed that the emergency runes above the door turned red and I entered as soon as it was physically possible for me to do. Okay, so they just turned red like a second ago? It's strange how often that happens with you, though, isn't it? Okay, but I'm not doing... You don't understand I'm not in the room when this happens, right? I'm standing out in the hall. I agree, but you've brought us to all these rooms, haven't you? You're interviewing suspects in a theft. I feel like a fucking crazy person. <laughs> you guys, I, no, I feel like you should come into the rooms from now on, just to, just to be sure. That guy set me up for muffins and then told me not to come in. Mm. He literally told me not to. He's the prince. I don't remember that happening. Are you sure that happened? Yeah. That one's an imbecile. Don't listen to the things he says. That absolutely happened. Do you guys want to wake them up because we are they're asleep? I feel like you stole the moonstone. Sunstone. Whatever it <laughs> All is. All right. I'm going to touch each of them and give them one hit point. All right. Okay. Well, you have one more place to visit and I, I cannot emphasize this enough. You're coming in. <laughs> I will come right there with you. I will be there in right in the room if you would like me to. That's what I would like. Now, the last place you have to visit is not a suspect. They are, however, the one thing all of our visitors had in common. It's time for you to see the flying library. Ooh. All right. All right but it can't be something that can attack us because I only got one fucking hit point. Well, that's too fucking bad, my friend. <laughs> Come on. I need a long rest. <laughs> I I do too. Is there a reason we don't long rest right now? Because if you take a long rest, the entire city will collapse into the abyss below. It'll be tomorrow morning. <laughs> it will. Um, I, I wanna I wanna try it. I feel like we could try <laughs> okay. it. Okay. We'll like set a short rest. Five thirty alarm. Yeah. You know what? It might not be the worst idea to leave the fucking dragon bone back here. So let's go. I'm going. Short rest. You all just sit there for 15 minutes <laughs> with your hands on your knees. <sighs> oh, that fucking sucked. Oh, so much dicks. So many dicks. The moment you step into the flying library, it's obvious why every foreigner you've spoken to traveled across planar space to see it. It is the most books any of you have ever seen in one place. For sure, but it resembles less of a library and more the world's largest birdcage. Each and every book here has been enchanted by an animation spell, and so they flit and swoop and soar without shelves through the air around you like hundreds of thousands of differently sized, differently behaved birds. Underneath this ever-moving mass of books are dozens of comfortable chairs and tables where scholars of all shapes and sizes from all over the realm study. One particular thing you notice is that each scholar in this room has a set of panpipes with them as they study. And as you watch, a scholar will occasionally consult a scrap of paper or a list and play a tune on their panpipes, which in turn causes a book to fly down to where they are and become motionless. At the center of all of this noise and music and motion sits a tiny golden bird on a perch. And in front of its perch is neatly written a sign that says information. Y'all yeah, think we should ask it who stole the sun's sun? Aye, <laughs> that's what the first thing that came to my mind. He's not going to know. Of course. 
course not. <laughs> That'd be awesome, though, if that, that was would be it. Great. That's how it happened. Just to be clear, Murloc usually waits outside. You would like Murloc to come into the library with you. So he's part of this conversation. Yes, I would. Yes. Okay. I would like, yeah, I agree. That's what I tried to do originally. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's fucking not what you tried to do. I think he should stand out in front of us the whole time. You want Murloc in eyesight. All right. So he is, he is there in the conversation. So you walk over to this bird. It takes a long time for the librarian to notice you. She stares sort of distractedly into the middle distance and seems to be muttering to herself. But once you get close enough that she can't really ignore you, she turns to you and says, Ah, visitors, welcome to the Flying Library. I am the keeper of this library, Cook Taru, created by patron Taru Turkanen. Thank you, Taru. What up, Taru? Oh, may I be of service? Hello. <laughs> Hi, who stole the sunstone? You said information here. Yes. Uh, it says so on your sign. Oh, you must be the heroes who are here to solve our mystery. Well, we're trying. Mm. Well, we're here. We're the people who are here to do that anyway. Well, libraries are great sources of information, and librarians know nothing more than to help people. But first, some rules. You can only call one book at a time. Books must be requested in advance, so I can either play their tune for you myself or give you the tune and some pipes. And of course, do not touch the books without first playing their tune. So, what do you need to know? Well, it sounds stupid when I say it, but we're trying to find who stole the sunstone. So is that any of that gonna, information going to be available to us? I mean, there's not a book in the library about I... who committed the theft that you're trying to research. Is, is there anything about the mystery that you don't know? Anything you'd like to know more about? I feel like you want us to say yes, but I'm just asking what you know about it. Oh, uh, well, I am mostly in the library maintaining my concentration on these very many animation spells, but I will tell you what I know. The sunstone is worn by the king around his neck. It's a powerful object indeed. It was created by an ancient king of Aracoc to keep the city alive. It also served as one of the seven parts of the Wand of Seven Parts. Should the Queen of Chaos ever rise again, it would be required to defeat her. And um, let me see, as to the mystery, I, nobody from Aracoc probably took it, I imagine seeing as its absence would destroy the entire city, unless someone wanted to see us destroyed. Ooh. Gonna huddle up like a wave from I, the yes. information. Yes, <laughs> right. what are we thinking here? <laughs> <laughs> so the paladin captain guy, Ooh. he could have been turned by some Queen of Chaos agent, right? Which is why he never found me. But that would mean that... No, that sounds like a bad plan to me. I don't think that happened at all. <laughs> you know you know what, Claw? Why don't you and Murloc over here have a lovely conversation no, I'm good, over I'm good. there in the corner? About it. No, we can keep talking about it. I could go for a muffin. Distract <laughs> him. Hey, here, check out this book. It's... Uh, Dove in the times of cholera. There you go. Oh, you know what, Dave? Why don't you show Murloc your awesome ability to, to summon bread? You can summon bread? That's do fucking... You wanna, do you want to see right. some bread? What kind of bread do you want, by the way? Uh, do, can you do it at will? It's not just like rolled on a table or anything? No, I actually can't do it at will, but I was just curious. Oh, um, what's your favorite, bread? Okay. Oh, well, that's happening. Brains. <laughs> cool. Did you say grains? <laughs> Grain. Multi-brain... <laughs> <laughs> like like loose grain? What? Sorry, I was trying to think of a brain pot. Did you panic and not be able to name a bread just now? Nope. In the edit, I came up with a great pun. Let me tell what, you. What, what, was, what pun did you come up with in the edit? I'll tell you right now. It was that one. <laughs> Bird bread. <laughs> All right. Dave is distracting All Murloc right. off to the side. Excellent. Okay. So what do we know? So we, we know that most likely, and this is what we discussed last time, most likely... Murloc gave Papa a brain sickness. Right. And then cured it in order to get in the thing. And we know that he's been there. He's the only one that didn't pass the zone of truth. He's literally been there every time we've been attacked right outside the door. Yeah. No, I'm not talking about like recap. I'm like, what, what do we think we figured out? Do we, are we leaning one way? I actually want to know why Murloc came here in the beginning right. before he got. Right. I mean, he says that it was to to take it over. I was wondering if he maybe it was going to take it over for a specific person before he, quote, bunked his head or not. 
I'd be interested to know how he and Nitten got involved too. Like whether that is some part of the mystery. All right. Um, my first question is, can you give us a book on mind flares? Absolutely. Mind flares. Hmm, let me see. And she pipes a few notes of a song and a thick, dangerous looking tome with the image of a mind flayer's profile slaps onto the desk nearby and falls open. And she flits through a f- few pages here and there and then looks up at you and says, Yes, uh, Mind Flayers, originally from the Underdark, universally evil and brilliant, capable of enthralling the minds of their victims through psychic attack, but only through the complete focus of every Mind Flayer in the dimension. They can't do it by themselves. Powerful magic users and not to be taken lightly in battle. The only way to break the thrall of a mind flayer is with powerful magic of your own or extreme emotion of the enthralled. It's why a mind flayer can't just command you to jump off a cliff or set yourself on fire. The urge of self-preservation is too strong, even in the face of total mental domination. I love that you've created a a challenge where like the the crux of the challenge is remembering what the fuck is going on in the story. I know. Like you, it's, you it's found literally our fatal blowing weakness. my mind. It's, yeah, right? All right. Now we need to know everything we need uh, pertinent about the sunstone. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I think I've told you pretty much everything there is to know. Okay. Never mind. I'm sure there's a whole big, thick book with hundreds and hundreds of pages. You've only told I, us like but, two things. But apparently, <laughs> apparently there's, no, there's no hints to be had that way. Yeah. I'll, I'll repeat the dialogue again, like, a, <laughs> like an Elder Scrolls thing when you know you've done it. <laughs> okay, question about Mind Flayers, so though. Do they serve any powers? Are they... Gods or deities or anything Are like they that? Are they used... It, have they been em- employed by people before? Uh, yes, of course. Mind flayers accept payment and homage and uh, often work as assassins or spies. Yeah, you know, of course, they, they've been employed by all sorts of... Did the Queen of Chaos ever, ever have one in her employ? I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, would, I would by all means finish this question. But afterwards, like I'm sure that the audience is dying to know what kind of bread Dave has summoned. <laughs> so I feel like we need to move over to that. I'm thinking it's sparrow dough. <laughs> I, I, I think that that might happen after we're done. <laughs> We're done with whatever this is. I just, I, I would just want to make sure that that we don't forget that we don't lose that thread. No, Noah's right. Let's check back in with Murloc, who is currently saying, and that's why that whole celiac sensitivity thing was disproved. <laughs> it was actually the same. It's study. like one in ten thousand people. I know, it's the same study. It's, it's crazy, that's, and they, that's, they feel that's a, terrible that about it. That study was debunked, I believe. Well, it's not just that they debunked it in their own study. It just was early release. It's embarrassing. All right, so we'll check back over to you guys. Yes. Well, you know. There's not much written about the Queen of Chaos, but let me see what I have. And she pipes a few notes and a, a like a, a very small book <laughs> that doesn't like fly, just sort of floats over and quietly lands with like this eerie feeling of sort of like darkness and evil and opens itself up. And she flits through a couple of pages and says, yes, yes, there's not, there's not much written about the rise of the Queen of Chaos. She's a She's an older demon. Uh, the Seven Hills are currently occupied mostly by minor demons, you know, um, stab, stab, fire, fire, uh, uh, sharp teeth, fangs. Uh, but the Queen of Chaos is, is more of a force of nature than anything. Uh, after the gods personified most evil things in the lowest level of hell, some of them, though not all of them, rose to the surface and attempted to take over. Most of them were easily defeated by avatars of good, like justice and fairness. But but chaos, chaos did not want power or glory. She just wanted to destroy things. So it's a good thing she's banished, I guess. Is what I'm saying. But but as to her minions, uh, yes, here in the book, it says she had minions of all sorts and flavors uh, marked by the black ooze that dripped from their open mouths and eyes, uh, especially upon defeat or death. Is, is that is that helpful? Incredibly. Thank you. And again, I uh, one more question. Sorry. <laughs> Did it say a way of breaking the spell of a mind flare? Yeah. So you can break the mind flares spell. Through magic of your own, powerful magic of your own, or the extreme emotion 
of the person who is enthralled. The extreme emotion. So like any emotion, like if it's extreme enough, maybe the bun bun of soothing would help. <gasps> That'd have to be pretty fucking soothing. But yeah, I mean, maybe <laughs> it's pretty fucking uh, soothing. I mean, it's magically soothing. Oh, you have ass wolves. That's a that's an emotion right there. <laughs> well, if it's my sister, I if if claw. Could you have a heart to heart with your sister? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. If, if it's my, but we don't know that it's my sister who's enthralled. Oh, I think they're all enthralled. I don't, I don't know that Murloc is entirely like here. He seems like insane. I, but I imagine if you've got so many concentration spells going on that you might be a little insane. But while you guys are saying that, just for the graphic novel, we pan over to Murloc. Dave has summoned him some bread and Murloc has turned it into a puppet and he's talking to it and he's like, no, your mother is disappointed in you, Mr. Breadface. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> Sorry, going back to your conversation. It's just important for the graphic novel. <laughs> yeah, but you can talk about whatever you want over there. This guy has, he's completely occupied. He can't even hear me saying this. I wanted to be in musicals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. Seasons of Dove, right? I think it might be worth our time to go back and talk to the paladin. Yeah. Do you want to look up a book on like the paladin? On him? Or just the, the order, the order of the knights? Uh, sure. Yeah, let's do that. Hey, guys, do you think there's any chance we're under a spell from this guy? He can't hear me. He's just <laughs> crying about like his dad not liking him. From <laughs> I just wish I'd learned to play the ukulele before I became a detective. Mm. I know it's what she always wanted. Dave, you're doing a great job. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I was really hoping we would flash cut back and Dave would also be crying with his own bread puppet. <laughs> but you know what? That's your choice. That's on you. My dad loved me. I was good at sports. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You've been incredibly helpful, lovely librarian. All right. So can we ask about Papa? As I'm sure everybody calls him. Yes. Uh, the Paladins of the Crown. Papa. Uh, let me see here. By the way, Papa was created by patron Drew, and I realized as I was editing that I never thanked Drew when I like said Papa was here. So thank you, Drew, for uh, creating Papa. Good job, Drew. Unless, of course, he turns out to be who done it, in which case, <laughs> fuck you, <Yeah>. Drew, <laughs> putting us through all this shit. Do we have to fight dicks and every other thing? <laughs> so Cockteru pipes a few notes of a song and a beautifully ornate gold-lettered tome with a large crown on the front gently glides in front of her and flips itself open. Let's see here. Blessed by the God of Justice, Paladins of the Crown are an order of fierce warriors whose loyalty to their king is the source of their power. Any disloyalty a paladin might show would strip him of his abilities. Similarly, in moments when their charges are in great danger, they are granted superior powers and boons to help them in their cause. As such moments are signified by a golden crown of power that appears above their heads. Uh, but you were asking about Papa, and so she like flips through a few pages and says, Oh yes, here, Papa, the 229th Paladin of the Crown to the family of Eric Koch uh, saved your father from the golden tabaxi invaders back in the day. A, a tremendous army of them sought to pave our land smooth and replace it with their caravans. Uh, many call it the Battle of Big Yellow Tabaxi. <laughs> or like Big Tobacco? I was thinking Big Yellow Taxi. Yeah. 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 They were going to pave paradise nice. and put up a parking lot. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Dude. Do, 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 do. What you needed was a pan flute to play that on, Eli. That's, that's the problem. Do, 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 do. <laughs> so, Morgan, I'm going to need you to do that on a pan flute. Yeah, you, you don't mind. pan flute, don't you? I'll go buy a pan flute. <laughs> Acting like you don't have a pan flute? Okay. <laughs> All right. I mean, I, honestly, if you're not frolicking through a forest playing a pan flute, you're not enjoying being you, Morgan. I just feel like... <laughs> Hey, everybody, just hopping in to thank you once again for listening to the podcast. We hope you're enjoying it as much as we enjoy making it. Let's see, a couple of announcements for you here. Oh, the folks over at the Gimme Dilute podcast had us for their fight night over on Twitch. You'll find a link about that in the show notes. Go check it out. I won't tell you who won or lost, but it was an incredibly 
good time. And you can watch that over on their channel, on Twitch or YouTube. I don't know where it is or how that kind of stuff works. I should probably learn it. Anyways, if you're enjoying the show, why not support the show for as little as a dollar an episode over at patreon.com forward slash DND minus all spelled out. As little as a buck a show, you get extra content and behind the scenes Dungeon Masters corners, all kinds of fun, cool stuff there. Not to mention a commercial free version of the show and chunk episodes where I put all the arcs together so you can just binge the show without having to listen to this part with me in the middle. And hey, if you can't afford to support the show, that's okay. Totally understand. Why not head over to wherever you listen to your podcasts and give us a five-star review wherever you get those. They help out the show. They introduce new listeners to the show. And I get a nice little message every time someone puts in a nice review. So I appreciate that. It's a very nice thing for me. All right. I think that's it. I'll let you get back to the show. And we'll see you again the first Friday after the first Wednesday of next month. Enjoy the rest of the show. Oh, are we still roasting Morgan or are we just moving on? <laughs> you can keep going. It's up to you. If you have stuff, I go yet. <laughs> yeah. If you, have, if you have thoughts, go for it. I mean, I was just going to say, like, rule of threes, we should do <laughs> two more. As she finishes telling you that part about pop paw, there is. Stupid hair. No, I don't know. <laughs> He's tall. No, that's me. Damn it. <laughs> He's a biking now. <laughs> As she finishes that last description, there's a loud boom from somewhere in the castle that shakes the walls, which sort of wakes Murloc up out of his bread fugue. And he says, what was that? I don't know, but it better be friendly because I only have one fucking hit point. <laughs> <laughs> but together we have two. It's not hard to follow the source of the noise as you head to the stables. There... It is obvious another bomb has gone off. And what is left of Tonk Filchbatter, the polymorphed horse warlock from the land of Gith, is spread all over the walls. Murloc, who hustled ahead of you, is already there, examining a mini muffin basket, or what's left of it. Oh, good, you, you're here. Uh, another assassination, no doubt, the work of our thief again, and and this time cleverly planted in our guest's gift basket. I guess you could say someone looked a gif horse in the mouth. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I think it's Jif horse. <laughs> Thank you. If you excuse me, I need to go now. And he sort yeah. of hustles <laughs> out of the room. You really do. I, oh, I don't think there's... Okay. All right. Well, let's investigate. Yeah. I have plus six investigation. I'm going to investigate. All right. Nice. I got an 11, so good for you. Can I do a history check? <laughs> oh, 24. All right. Oh, no need. Okay, we're good. Beautiful. Snedrick, you have a full-on Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes moment, <laughs> right? Where everything gets... I am gonna lick some fucking rocks. That's your Sherlock Holmes go-to? Yeah, the best Sherlock Holmes, <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. No, absolutely. You're Obviously. Right. Yeah. Oh. No, no argument here. Our Patreon just dropped to one single patron. <laughs> Thomas Smith is our now only remaining patron. I just quit the show. Yeah. That's what I did. Anna's <laughs> gone. Who's, who's better, Cumberbatch? Fuck How him. How dare you? I am a Cumberbitch. No, oh, I'm 100% Cumberbatch. We don't have to go into this right now. <laughs> Boo. You can tell that someone hid a stone of fireball in one of the mini muffins. So someone centered a fireball spell right on the center of this basket of mini muffins. And when the horse bit into one, he cracked the globe and it created this big explosion and that's what killed him. All right. I'm going to run to the kitchens real fast and say, stop sending any more mini muffins. <laughs> okay. So Bridget, as you head out, right, as you start to go, you were actually met by one of the Royal Guards. And you can tell right away that something is wrong. He, he says like, oh, you all, you all need to come with me, Rock. The, the king requests your presence immediately, Rock. My goodness. All right. Well. Wait, I'm going to turn to Claw and ask him why he doesn't have an accent like the rest of his people. I had to train myself away from Okay. Right, no, I get it. It's like I Midwesterners, Rock. I was my fair lady by somebody. <laughs> my wife was from the... Everybody tries to have a Midwestern accent. That's silly. <laughs> I have a quick question. Are the muffins that blew up the ones that I ordered? Yep. Oops. Okay. <laughs> so when you arrive in the throne room, it is full of guards, full of guards. 
Murloc stands by Claw's father's side, looking somber, as does Nitten. But Papa is not by the king's side. He is chained up in front of him. When you enter and the doors are slid shut behind you, Nitten is pleading with the king. Father, rock. this must be a mistake. Claw would never rock. But when she sees you, she falls silent. The king chooses his words carefully. Claw, um, rock. I'm afraid Murloc here made something of a discovery this afternoon about you and your companions. And he pulls from beneath his robes a glowing red-yellow stone on a chain. Murloc, do you want to tell them what you found? Yes. Believe me, it pains me to say this, Your Majesty, but as you all know, Prince Kla and his friend's behavior since arriving in Ericoc has been to say the least, strange. First, he disappeared without a trace, despite Papa's best efforts to find him. Then, he shows up out of nowhere mere days after the Sunstone disappeared, but before the Festival of the Sun. From his moment of arrival, his behavior was strange. He pretended to be someone other than he was. He stole from guests and myself, grilled random members of the staff on his own. He and his friends have physically attacked several of our guests, claiming to act in self-defense. But it didn't all come together until this morning. Instead of visiting the suspects he'd agreed to question, as I suggested, he rushed to the kitchens, where he ordered me, personally, to bring one of the guests a basket of mini-muffins. All right, so it's the fucking murloc. The very basket that killed our guest from Gith. Then they hurried off and attacked the mimics, again, according to them, in self-defense. But the question I had was, why? The reason became obvious. He learned of my marriage to Nitin. If he were gone, Nitin and I could inherit the throne. So he stole the stone in an attempt to destroy the kingdom he could no longer rule. But how? He wasn't in the palace when it was stolen. Well, for that, he needed someone to take the fall. Someone inside the palace. Someone who had gone in search for him. Someone who trusted him. Someone like Papa. I searched Papa's chambers this afternoon, after I saw the explosion in the stables, and there, behind a hidden stone in the wall, I found it. The sunstone. The reason Papa couldn't remember who attacked the king was because it was him, doubtless through some form of mind control. You saw the way they came in last night and cast zone of truth on everyone present without so much of a hello. But I had to be sure. Through the use of simple magics, I managed to break the spell, and Papa has since confessed to everything. And Papa turns to you with hurt and anger in his eyes, and he says, It's true, Prince Claw. I remember it all now. The stone, the attack. Your ambush on me back in the city. Why? Why did you do all this to me? You guys know this. This guy's a mind flayer. Literally, like that's the name of his thing. He's a mind flayer, right? Y'all have that's a librarian. Clear. You'd ask the librarian. Hey, playing my. He can. He can make you think stuff. It's. He's clearly the bad guy. No, obviously. Or uh, rock the the evidence. All points to you. Can we cast Zone of Truth again on <laughs> some people? I fucking wish, but I'm out of goddamn spell slots. <laughs> I'm afraid you won't be casting any spells today. Guards. Why would you object to a Zone of Truth spell? There couldn't be anything wrong with a Zone of Truth, right? No, I don't trust you to do a spell because I don't think it's going to be the Zone of Truth. I think it's going to be a Zone of Fire or something scary. I mean, when, when it's not fire, then it would be clear. Right, but... The only way to find that out would to let you light me on fire, wouldn't it? No. You know what? I want to. I want to bring in uh, fantasy Andrew Torres. This is some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> there is no Andrew Torres in this universe. Take them to the dungeon. We have a festival of the sun to complete, a wedding to celebrate, and in the morning, I will deal with these traitors. Oh boy! I'll have had a long rest by then. I was going to go ahead and tell you that. Get back my fucking spell slot. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't even fucking name a bird themed bread earlier. It was really suspicious. <laughs> Just top of my head, Pumper Neagle. There you oh, go. That's great. <laughs> one. 
I wondered why Heath was so quiet. It wasn't. It wasn't. It was mind flayer related that he was looking for, though not bird related. Focaccia, nice. multi crane, multi brains. That's what I was aiming for. Yep. All right. That's what you said. Okay. See, nailed it. Heath, don't steal my jokes. If you don't mind. Wow. Hurtful. You're escorted along with the chained up papa down into the bowels of the palace, which you imagine to be made up of the trunk of the tree that makes up most of Arakok. Here in the dungeon, it is pitch black, lit only by torches. You are relieved of your weapons and your armor and all your magical items and locked in a cell made of magically strengthened branches. Wait, wait. Uh, one of my magical items is a tattoo on my ass. I still have that. <laughs> don't take that. You still have the wolf tattoo. Yeah. yeah, yeah I was going to yeah. say, joke's on you. I have my sigil tattoo to my body, motherfucker. <laughs> I think, yeah, we all have tattoos, right? Mm. So we're good. Yeah. Once they've locked you inside, Murloc says, I'll make sure these five don't make trouble. And he waves his hand. Everybody make a wisdom saving throw for me. Oh, crap. Oh, boy. Hey, oh, 18. Oh, 19. Seven. Seven? Well, plus four. <laughs> I get 11. 11. Dave? I have very slow dice. <laughs> oh, God, we're still doing the <laughs> slow dice thing. 12. 12. All right. You are actually all, even with those rolls, you are all overtaken by sleep. With 19? Even with a 19, you are overtaken by sleep. Eh, at least I get my spell slots back. Okay, cool. Go ahead and give yourselves a long rest. Long rest. Claw, when you open your eyes, at first, it seems as though you merely blinked. Murloc is still standing outside of your cell, but you realize now that the guards are gone and you're actually the only one awake. Also, the light in here, while still bathed in shadow, is brighter. It must be morning. Murloc speaks in a low voice so as not to wake the others. Prince Clara, forgive me for disturbing your slumber. I just wanted you to know what's about to happen. And he pulls a small golden stone on a chain from his pocket. Yes, I'm afraid that your father, eager as he was to be reunited with his precious sunstone, accidentally accepted the fireball gem I gave him instead. In just a few moments, when he attempts to use it to reinvigorate Arakok, he will instead cause an explosion that will tragically take the lives of both him and my lovely bride. Uh, you missed the ceremony, by the way. It was excellent. She read, love is patient, love is kind. It was really original. What did you read? Uh, I read, where's fancy bread? In the heart or in the head? Hers is better. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely better. <laughs> you don't deserve her. You don't deserve her. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, tragically, that explosion will leave me with the burden of the crown, and it is my sorrowful duty to say that my first act will be to execute the king's treacherous son, his co-conspirators, and of course, his highness's incompetent bodyguard. I actually only came down for this, and he reaches onto the table where all your weapons and armor are for the confiscated wand of seven parts, but the moment his hand touches the wand, you watch his skin bubble, and he draws it back as though he's been burned. Damn it! What the hell? He yells. It's, it's fine. I'll, I'll come back for it later. Damn it, stupid ancient magics. And he storms out of the room. Doesn't that mean he's doing Mind Flayer stuff in that, from that book? We're asleep. Get out of the sketch. <laughs> <laughs> I reach for the wand of seven parts. Uh, you can't reach it from the cell. Ah, okay, fine. That would be like a pretty basic locking <laughs> us up kind mm -hmm. of a... You want to wake us up? I'm going to sit alone with my thoughts for about an hour. <laughs> Love it. Yes. <laughs> Great podcasting. Getting some sword and scale going here, baby. <laughs> so good. I'll just put a little small dripping sound effect here. I'm going to do an acrobatics check and try and reach the one to seven parts. Sure. I got a two. Okay, I'll go ahead and wake everybody up. <laughs> you, just, you just cartwheel your ass into the, into the bars. Plonk. <laughs> I'm assuming that wakes everybody up, yeah. right? <laughs> hey, man, were you trying to cartwheel your way through them bars? I want to say no. All right. But I can't. Who's got mage hand? I've got mage hand. I have mage hand. Oh, wait, you got mage hand. All right. Some, why, don't you, why don't you get the get our stuff and bring it over here? Okay. Through the bars with mage hand. All right. I'll do mage hand. Here we go. Mage hand magic. <laughs> All right. So, Dave, a, a <laughs> magical mage hand appears in front of you, and you can lift what? Up to 10 pounds with that? I believe. Uh, 
I it's up to ten pounds. Up to ten, yeah, yeah. So Snedrick and Dave sort of slowly pass all of your equipment through the bars of the cell. Excellent. And you're all now wearing your armor and everything again. Okie doke. So I feel r- refreshed. Does anybody know have an unlocking spell? Oh, you know what? I have to spell magic. Are is there magic holding this thing closed or? It's branches, right? Magical branches. Magically strengthened branches, yeah. Oh, it's removed curse. It's not the spell magic. Never mind. Hey, Claw, you pretend to be a thief all the time. Do you have thieves' pets? <laughs> I don't, because the key word there is pretend. Because <laughs> I'm not actually good at it. I, at least I don't think I do. At least you fucking, like, <laughs> admit no. <it. laughs> admit it. That's good. That's progress. All right. So, Eli, I'm going to look around the cell and see if I can find, I'm going to investigate the cell and see if I can find anything, you know, like a like a weakness in the cell or something like that. Does anybody have message? I have a piton. That's a, an adventuring gear, actually. <laughs> God damn it. I got a 13, so I probably didn't investigate very good. I have a feeling we probably have an item that Eli has given us that we're supposed to use at this point. Here's what I will give you, and I'll call it a little bit of a hint. It's dark down here, and so everything is lit by torches, which means that it's it's kind of bright, but most of the hall is... Burn ho- the whole thing down! <laughs> <laughs> ...is only covered in shadows. Okay, got it. All right, I have Oh, hey, shadows! Hang on, hang on. You know something with shadows! Hang on, hang on. Let me read them all. I don't know them all by heart. I have no shadow things. Don't you have shower thoughts or something? I have a shadow thing. You have a shadow basis. <laughs> Do you guys want to hear some bass? Like a good bass solo? <laughs> okay, I think it is Shadow Step. That's Seinfeld. That's Seinfeld. Sorry. Shadow Step. When you are in dim light or darkness, as a bonus action, you can teleport up to 60 feet to an unoccupied space you can see that is also in dim light or darkness. I feel like that would come in handy. Yeah. I thought it was the letter from a dead colleague. I was way off base. (laughs) Okay, so I'm assuming that I'm going to cast this and then break everybody out. I'm assuming they can't follow me, right? No. Do it. Okay. I have a thunder step teleport. Oh, yeah. Oh, excellent. So if he fucking goes off. I think your thunder step hurts everybody who. um... Yeah. (laughs) It does. It mildly, depending on rolling. Just like everything you fucking do, Dave. <laughs> Listen, there's a cost to be hanging out around me. That's what it is. Hey, poor Carl. It is what it is. Doesn't have a choice. Okay, so I'm going to cast Shadow Step. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to move to the shadow outside of the cell. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to do a perception check because I... Don't know much out here. Yeah, around the corner, you can see some keys hanging on the wall. Perfect. Well, there you go. That's nifty. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to sit for about an hour and think about the keys. I'm going to have the magic hand grab the keys and fucking open the thing. (laughs) Yeah, when's our execution (laughs) time? Dave's Dave's magic hand (laughs) runs around the corner. He's like, (laughs) tries to beat claw to it, (laughs) desperately fumbling with the keys. Don't worry, you couldn't see them from the cell. Otherwise, I would have told you. (laughs) Okay, cool. I'm going to spend all my key points just beating this mage hand in a race. I... Roll, right, roll for initiative against the mage hand. <laughs> Heads up, and I can testify to this because I just edited the last episode. He is going to try to give you a so-called defensive hand job. So, you know. <laughs> okay. Prepare. I feel like... I feel... <laughs> I feel like 10 pounds of pressure to the taint is probably going to hurt you a bit. I'm just saying, I've tried to attack Heath a bunch of times. I feel like we need to step into Mr. Wizard's laboratory now, okay? (laughs) So I grab the keys, I unlock the branches. All right. And we are on our way. You are all about to head up the stairs when a quiet voice behind you says, "Um, I don't suppose you all have room for one more? It's the paladin. I want to tell you, man, I thought you were the bad guy and I'm sorry. (laughs) No, 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 that's that's fair. Uh, But here's the funny thing. Murloc was so busy gloating, he forgot that his sleep spell that he cast on all of us broke his thrall over me. I know I haven't given y'all a lot of reason to trust me, but if you'll have me, I'd like to help. 
I would love someone who knows what the fuck they're doing during battle. <laughs> Let's do this. Hey, Papa, do you have a do you have a blunderbuss gun by any chance on you in battle? Would you Is like that a thing one? you have? It's, I mean, we all have our, our strengths and weaknesses. I don't know, Dave. Have you ever fucking used your blunderbuss? <laughs> yeah, I use it. Killed yeah, I used it the other day. He blew us he all sure up did. yesterday. Didn't I? Didn't I blow up the dicks into more dicks or something? Ah, <laughs> you did. You're welcome. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who doesn't want more dicks? And yeah, I think you killed one of our people. I, it was me. If you could have four smaller dicks or two bigger dicks, you'd want four smaller dicks, obviously. So you're welcome. I I, I just love the idea that Papa is sitting in his cage as this plays out. <laughs> yeah. You know, as Papa stands to his feet, he looks unlike any of you have ever seen him. He's still older and perhaps no longer in his prime, but he radiates power. And the holy warrior he is is made all the more evident by the golden crown of light that now hovers above his head. He straps his tall shield onto his arm, grabs his sword, and says to you, well then, if you'll excuse the expression, God save the king. Like, I'm worried about how much resources I'm taking up in the world. No, I know. You're, and, and your dad doesn't love you because you got a BFA in drama or like whatever. I, know, it's a, <laughs> I need to do a better <laughs> opening line because that's too real. <laughs> <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.